Hey everyone, Andrea Walford here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this one tiny word thanks card featuring Stampin' Up's Falling Flowers stamp set and the coordinating Mayflowers framelits. The main technique I'll be demonstrating in this card is how to color in outline images using Stampin' Up's watercolor pencils and a blender pen. I'll be sharing with you some tips on how to get great results working on regular cardstock. Now, regular cardstock is not normally the recommended surface for watercoloring techniques because of its low capacity to hold water and tendency to pill if you overblend. But with the techniques that I'm going to show you, you'll be able to work on regular cardstock like a pro. I'll also show you how you can blend several colors together in one image. So let's get started. I have here the Falling Flowers stamp set, and you're going to see me use every single image except for the leaves and the smallest flower. I'm working on a scrap piece of Whisper White Thick cardstock, and that's the first tip that I have for you. The Whisper White Thick cardstock is, as its name says, thicker than regular Whisper White cardstock, so it has a greater capacity to absorb moisture than the regular cardstock does. It'll handle the blender pen a lot better, and it won't pill quite as easily. Now as you can see, the ink I'm using is Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I want to give you a word of caution with this ink, as it's a water-soluble ink, meaning that it will run when it comes in contact with water. Now I do find that it is a hardier ink than a lot of the other dye inks, so it can actually withstand a little more moisture than the normal Stampin' Up! classic dye inks, so it will work for this technique. Now that said, if you tend to be heavier handed with your blender pen, then you may want to use a permanent waterproof ink such as Jet Black Stays On. My suggestion to you would be to stamp a small image and test it out, color it in and blend it out using the techniques I'm going to demonstrate. If you don't see your ink bleeding, then go ahead and stamp your remaining images. If you do, then switch to Jet Black Stays On to stamp your images. Now as I stamp my images, you may notice that I'm getting a little black smudge of ink off to the side of each image. Now this is something that I'm doing deliberately as it will help me align my image with my dye later on. So if you look at each of the flower stamps, you'll notice that there's this little rubber piece that sticks out beyond the actual image outline. And on the label of the stamp, it's marked with a little arrowhead. As I ink my stamp, I'm rocking it a little against the ink pad so that that little rubber area picks up ink. Then, as I stamp my image, I'm rocking it slightly towards that little rubber area to make sure that I'm getting that impression on my cardstock. And that's where the little ink smudges you see are coming from. I've now finished stamping my images and I'm ready to add color. I'm starting with the largest flower and my Melon Mambo watercolor pencil. So here is where the second tip for getting great results on regular cardstock comes in. Normally, when you're watercoloring an image, to create that shaded effect, you would add a little bit of color to just a portion of the image, and then you would blend it out with your blender pen or aqua painter. And that's what gives that shaded or gradient effect. Now, first of all, you cannot use an aqua painter on regular cardstock, even the Whisper White thick cardstock. Aqua painters, also called a water brush, put too much water on your paper, which will cause it to buckle severely, as well as pill pretty quickly. So you do have to limit yourself to a blender pen when working on regular cardstock. Now even with a blender pen, because regular cardstock has a much different surface and texture than watercolor paper, you're not going to be able to blend the color out as smoothly. So the trick is that you have to cover the entire area of your stamped image with your watercolor pencil. So a couple of tips when laying down your color. First of all, it's better to lay down your color in layers rather than try to lay down a lot of color at once by pressing firmly when you color. If you press too firmly, you can end up with the impression of the pencil scratched into your cardstock surface, which will show up when you try to blend the colors out. So I'm working in sections, coloring with light pressure to lay down my first layer of color. Then I'm rotating my cardstock slightly so that when I lay down my second layer of color, I'm actually coloring at a slightly different angle. What this does is help cover up the white space that's a result of the grain in the paper. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I'm going to show you how to blend two different colors together. Essentially, all you need to do in this first step of color layering is to add in your second color over top of the first in the area that you want it to show. So in this case, I'm adding in some pumpkin pie watercolor pencil towards the inner area of each of the flower petals. Now I am pressing a little more firmly than I did with the Melon Mambo watercolor pencil. And this is because the surface I'm working on is now relatively slick from the layers of Melon Mambo that I've already applied. 
So in order for the color to stick, I need to apply a little more color, and it's easiest to do this simply by applying a little bit more pressure when I'm coloring. For my medium flower with the pointy petals, I'm using the same technique as I did with the large flower, but this time I'm starting with my Daffodil Delight watercolor pencil, and I'm laying down color over the entire surface area of the flower. The color that I'm layering on top of this flower is my pumpkin pie, and I'm adding some of the pumpkin pie to the center of the flower as well as to the inner areas of the petals. For the smallest flower, I'm coloring in the entire area first with the pumpkin pie watercolor pencil, and then I'm layering some melon mambo on top in the center and inner area of the petals. The final image I'm coloring in with my watercolor pencils is the berry image, and I'm using my Bermuda Bay watercolor pencil. For this image, I'm not blending in another color, I'm just leaving it as is with the one color. With all my images colored, I'm now blending the watercolor pencil out using my blender pen. You'll notice that as I'm coloring, I'm either coloring in a straight back and forth angled stroke, or sometimes you'll see me use a straight up and down stroke. I start from the center of the flower and work towards the tip of the petal. Any stroke marks I see, I then blend out. Now every once in a while, you'll see me use a circular stroke. There really isn't a right or wrong way to color in your image per se, Use whatever type of stroke you feel most comfortable with and whatever gives you the best results. You can really see the difference in the effect that you get simply by blending out the color with your blender pen. It smooths out the color in the image so that the pencil lines almost completely disappear. Now you may notice that the shaded effect that you get is much more subtle than with a true watercoloring technique on watercolor paper. If you want to see a more dramatic difference in shading, you can go back and add more color to the areas you want to appear shaded by simply applying the color pencil directly to that area or picking up some of the color pencil from the tip of the pencil using your blender pen. The other thing you could do is go in with your blender pen and classic ink pads, but that's something I demonstrate in detail in the Falling Flowers card class. It's beyond the scope of this video. So you've now seen me blend out the color in the largest flower. For the remaining images, the technique I'm using is exactly the same. With my images all colored, I'm now ready to die cut them out with my coordinating Mayflowers framelits and my Big Shot. You'll notice the little metal piece that I was referring to earlier in the video. I'm aligning that metal piece with the stamped ink smudges that are beside each of my images, which allows me to fit the dies over top of each image quickly and easily. Now in order to hold the dies in place and keep them from shifting as I'm die cutting, I'm placing a couple small pieces of low tack tape over top. The low tack tape is just tacky enough to hold the die to the cardstock, but not so tacky that it'll tear my cardstock when I remove it. So I'm back from my Big Shot and you can see I've now die cut all my pieces. So I have here a four by five and a quarter inch piece of Whisper White cardstock, and I'm stamping my sentiment from the One Big Meaning stamp set in the bottom left corner of my cardstock panel using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Now, the first impression that I got wasn't quite as dark and crisp as I wanted it to, so I re-inked my stamp with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and then double stamped the image. Now this was possible because I was using my Stampin' With Jig and in between stamping the images, I did not allow the actual Stampin' With Jig to shift. So the next image I'm stamping onto my cardstock panel is the swirl image. So I've rotated my cardstock so that it's now in a portrait position and the thanks is to the top left. So I'm going to be stamping my swirl to the bottom right and I stamped it in my Memento Tuxedo Black ink, once again using my Stampin' With Jig. So now before I start adding in my die cut flowers, I just want to stick my stamped cardstock panel onto my card front. So I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Glue and applying a bit of that glue to the back. I'm then centering and sticking my panel onto my card front. And my card is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch card I created out of Whisper White thick cardstock. To stick my die cut pieces down, I'm using that same glue, the Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Glue. And I'm starting off by sticking down the largest flower because in essence, that is the image that determines the placement of all the other images. So to make sure I can still tuck my other images underneath, I just put a tiny little dab of glue behind the center of the large flower and then stuck it to my panel. 
I then started taking my other flowers, placing a little bit of glue on the back, and then tucking them either under or over top, depending on how I wanted them placed in relation to the large flower. Now after I had all my die cut pieces stuck down to my cardstock panel, I came back with my Bermuda Bay watercolor pencil and then colored in the two berries that are a part of that swirl image. So I added in the color with my watercolor pencil and then I took my blender pen and just quickly blended it out. Now for the leaves, I didn't have the right color of watercolor pencil. So in the watercolor pencil set, the color of green that's included is Old Olive. But in the set of cards I've been doing with the Falling Flowers stamp set, I've actually been working with Wild Wasabi. And I like the Wild Wasabi because it's a much brighter green. So to color in the leaves, I decided to grab my Wild Wasabi ink pad. I pressed the pad and lid together to get a little pool of ink as you see there. And then using my blender pen, I just picked up the ink and then carefully applied it to my leaves. Now, this technique, normally I wouldn't recommend coloring in with your dye inks and blender pen on regular cardstock, but because the surface area of the leaves is so tiny, it really doesn't make a difference. So you can still get a really pretty effect. The final step for this card was to embellish with a few of my rhinestone basic jewels. Now I placed a cluster of three rhinestones in the center of the large flower, a rhinestone in the center of each of the other flowers, and then I placed a cluster of three rhinestones to the top right of the image and then to the bottom left of the focal point image. So there you have it. That's how I created this card using watercolor pencils and a blender pen. Now, what if you don't like to color? Maybe you don't feel comfortable with your coloring skills, or maybe you just don't have the time it takes to color in your outline images. Well, if that's the case, then be sure to sign up for my free three ways to add color to your outline images series. In this series, I show you three different fast and easy ways that you can create beautiful, colorful cards using your outline image stamps. You can sign up for the free video series by clicking on the link below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I look forward to creating with you again soon. See ya!